Analyzing leaders, they find that they all have seven qualities in common, and these qualities are all learnable. You learn them by practice. Whatever you dwell upon or think about grows in your mentality. If you think about these qualities, you start to develop them. Number one, the most important quality is vision. Leaders have vision. Peter Drucker said that if you do not have a vision to be a world leader when you start your business on your kitchen table, you'll probably never be very successful. Imagine you could be a world leader. You ask the question, well, if I was the world leader in my field, how would I be different from today? How would my company be different from today? You cannot achieve it if you cannot write it down. If you don't know what it is, you're unclear, fuzzy. It's almost like you're driving in the fog or a dark night with no lights. But when you write it down, it starts to become clearer and clearer, and there's a direct relationship between how clear your ideal future is on paper and how fast you create it. You may not even know clearly where you're going to achieve it, but all you have to do is be clear about what you want, write it down. The difference between winners and losers in every field. Winners take the first step with no guarantee of success. The second quality is courage. The two qualities that every single leader had in common were vision, an exciting picture of the future that they wanted to create, and courage, the courage to take action on the vision with no guarantees. Nothing worthwhile in life is possible without taking a risk, and the risk is that it won't work. Move out of the comfort zone. The biggest single limitation on success in work today is the comfort zone. People become comfortable doing things a certain way, and they don't want to change. There is a whole new field that I am working in, it's called business model innovation, because of rapid change in our business world. Most business models are obsolete. The wonderful thing about business model innovation is that it's a skill, and they're all learnable. You can learn, but you've got to get out of your comfort zone. This is the hardest thing for all companies. The biggest single obstacle is that people won't change because they're so comfortable doing it the old way. So, the third quality of leadership worldwide is integrity. It's impossible to follow someone if you don't believe them, if you don't believe that what they say is true. And the biggest mistake that leaders can make is to make a promise and not keep the promise or to say that they will do something and then not do it. So, integrity is considered the most important skill. It even comes before leadership, vision, and courage. It's really important if you're a leader and you have a reputation for not telling the truth, you will soon be pushed aside. Everybody won't know who you are, and then you will be finished. Number four is responsibility. Leaders do not criticize or complain. When you criticize anything or anyone, you actually weaken yourself. And when you become weak, you become little. In the military academies, whenever you are confronted with a senior officer and let's say your tie is askew or your jacket is not ironed, that's a cadet. Why is your jacket unironed? And you're only allowed to give one of three answers. Yes, sir, no, sir, no excuse. That's how they train the top officers in the world because they know that nothing makes a person weaker or littler than always making excuses. No leader could be a leader if all they did was make excuses. Henry Ford once gave this motto for success. It's never complain, never explain. This is the fifth quality of leaders, excellence. Leaders set high standards. Leaders work for excellence in products and services. They're constantly striving. They did a study recently, fastest growing small and medium sized companies in America. These companies, in three years, had grown 10, 20, 50, 100 times in size and profit. They studied, they said, what was the most important factor in the success of these businesses? All in very competitive fields, tremendous competition. Number one was quality. The products and services they produced were recognized as being top quality, and the leaders of those companies were intensely focused on improving quality every day. They're looking for ways to improve their products and services and the way that they take care of their customers. And sometimes, one small change makes a tremendous difference. Number six is communication. Leaders are good communicators. Those who lead are the ones who can clearly talk about what they believe. Let's imagine that we're out on a tour, a three-hour tour, on a boat, and we get stranded on a desert island. Well, one of us stands up and says, I will lead. We want to follow the second guy. The only thing we have is his conviction, his absolute belief in the existence of that world that we cannot see, and his ability to put that future state into words that we're drawn to. And we will volunteer to go with him, maybe even take personal risk. The irony is our own survival depends on our ability to help each other. This is the irony. And here we go. 
We had to cross rivers and go around boulders and chop down trees, and eventually, we come to where he said the fishing village is. And there's no fishing village. And he turns to us and says, I believe there was a fishing village, but that doesn't matter because look what we were able to do. We were able to get through that forest together. That's called leadership. When people believe what you believe, they will work for you with blood, sweat, and tears. When they don't believe what you believe, they work for your money. The seventh quality of leadership is action. The action orientation is the critical thing. If a person takes action quickly on a new idea, the chances are they're going to be successful go up by hundreds of percent. When you take action, you get three benefits. The first benefit is that you get feedback, which enables you to self-correct. And all of life is a process of experimenting. Second of all, you get ideas. It makes you smarter. It activates more of your brain. Deading their pass. Ivling doesn't do anything, but taking action actually sort of lights up your brain like a Christmas tree. And the third factor is that taking action gives you confidence. The more confidence you have, the more creative you are, the more energy you have, the happier you are. You feel like you're in control of your life. You feel powerful. And that is why the difference between the top 20% of people in every society and business are proactive. They're constantly taking action. The bottom 80% are passive. They're waiting for someone else to come and tell them what to do. And so, since you are highly proactive, you're obviously in the top, probably the top 10% of your field. And the people in the top 10% are the ones who make all the progress. Maybe not in the short term, but in the long term. Is a person who acts like a leader is a leader that minute. So, a person can go from being a passive person, a follower, to being a leader in one instant. All you have to do is begin to act like a leader. Just think like a leader and act like a leader. Your personal leadership ability is the major limit on what you can achieve because what you do is you just set a goal and you make a plan and you work on that goal every single day. That's pure leadership. When a team is in trouble, they don't fire the players, they change the coach. When a company is in trouble, they don't fire the staff, they bring in a new leader. A new leader can transform an organization. Number two is leadership is the ability to get results, to get the results that are expected of you. You get the results that you have committed to get. If you start your own business, the results you committed to getting are making sales and generating profits to provide for yourself and your family and so on and so forth. So, results are the keys, like a semicolon or a colon. There's a one-to-one -one between leadership and results. You can be a leader without followers. You don't have to have a team to be a leader. As long as you're getting results, you're a leader. The third quality is leaders have a clear vision of the future. The top 10% of people have a very clear idea of where they're going. They have clear goals and clear plans that they're working on. Drucker said that leaders think about the future. But vision is an ideal future picture. It helps the company decide what they should be doing more of, what they should be doing less of, what is consistent with their philosophy and their values, and what is not. So, it's very important that individuals and organizations sit down and think through what the vision should be. Decide what's right before you decide what's possible. Imagine that your company is now perfect in every respect. It has the finest people, products, processes, and services. What would it look like? What would it stand for? Allow yourself to play with this idea. This is called blue sky thinking, and it's practiced by all peak performing executives. They allow themselves to dream and to visualize what the very ideal would be. Leaders expect to fail over and over again. They don't like it, they don't want it, they avoid it if they possibly can, but they know it is an inevitable part of moving forward. But they're willing to take it, they're willing to take the pain in pursuit of success. You'll find that successful people fail far more than unsuccessful people. Successful people hate failure and they don't like the risk, but they take it anyway because that's the price. Therefore, when you have a situation where you have to take a risk, do everything possible to mitigate your risk. Interesting discovery. Successful entrepreneurs are not risk seekers. They're very clever risk avoiders in pursuit of profit. They're not out there throwing their money around like gamblers in Las Vegas. They're very careful with their money. They know that in any case, a good friend of mine said two-thirds of your investments, no matter how much due diligence you do, will not work out. But you just have to minimize your losses with the best information and maximize your profits. Don't ever be afraid of taking a risk in the pursuit of success. Number two is to market and innovate. Always looking for faster, better, newer, more original, different, 
cheaper ways to get the job done more effectively for yourself and your organization. Encouraging people to be creative means encouraging them to come up with ideas and never raining on their parade. The Japanese employees of large corporations generate a hundred times the number of ideas that employees of American corporations generate. And you know the reason? The reason is because every single idea is respected, and every single idea is encouraged, and every single person with an idea gets an opportunity to try it out on a small scale. In American corporations, however, when somebody comes up with an idea, everybody takes turns dumping on the idea and pointing out all the holes in the idea. So, welcome ideas and encourage creativity. Allow people to come up with even ridiculous ideas and just listen to them. Number three, set priorities and work on key tasks. There's always a hundred things that you can do, but the ability to set priorities is one of the most important of all skills that we have as adults. Number four is focus and concentrate where superior results are possible. It's amazing how many of us spend an enormous amount of time working on something that need not be done at all. The rule for great success is do fewer things but do more important things, and do more of them and get better at them. Do fewer things but do more important things, and do them more often and get better at them, and that alone will double your income. Number five is solve problems and make decisions. Your ability to solve problems is usually the critical factor in your promotion, your income, your success, and so on. Colin Powell said that leadership is the ability to solve problems between you and any goal you have, especially a financial goal. The only thing that stands between you and any goal you have is problems. Your ability to remove the obstacles that hold you back from achieving your financial goals is the critical skill of all. Thinking, defining the problems clearly, defining the solutions clearly, picking the most important solution to the most important problem, and taking action on it and working on it and expecting it not to work a few times until you finally break through. Number six, led by example, be a role model. Once you take the roles, everybody is watching you, and your job is to be a role model. Kant said, live your life as though your every act were to become a universal law. That is a leader, if you set high standards for yourself, you will be, by extension, setting high standards for others. Remember, everybody watches you. You're the standard bearer. If you have children, what they found in psychology is that children are more influenced by your example than by anything else that you do or say. Well, anything else that you say. Number seven is performing, get results. What can you, and only you, do that, if done well, can make a real difference? Sometimes, it's a decision you need to make or a customer you need to call or a sales plan you need to initiate. But there's always something that you and only you can do. If you don't do it, nobody else will do it. But if you do do it, and you do it well, it can make a real difference. And whatever you're doing, if it's not the most valuable, stop doing it and start doing what is. This takes tremendous discipline. But as Goethe said, everything is hard before it's easy. Good habits are hard to form, and the most important of all habits to form is the habit of working on the most valuable thing you can possibly be doing. Leadership and self-discipline go hand in hand. It is not possible to imagine an effective leader who lacks self-discipline, willpower, self-control, and self-mastery. The overarching characteristic of a leader is that he is in complete control of himself in every situation. There's seldom a time in history when leaders were so needed and so much in demand as today. We need leaders at every level of society, both in the profit and non-profit sectors. We need leaders in our families, businesses, places of worship, community organizations, and especially in politics. We need men and women who take their responsibilities seriously and are willing to step forward to take command of the situation. Fortunately, leadership is learnable. Leaders are developed, usually self-developed, over time through hard work, experience, and training. As Peter Drucker once said, there may be natural-born leaders, but there are so few of them that they make no difference in the great scheme of things. Four stages of development in your career. In business, you progress through four levels of activity. First, you start off as an employee with limited knowledge and experience. Then, as you grow, learn, and develop the ability to get results, you evolve upward and become a supervisor with responsibility for the performance and results of other people. As you continue to move up the scale of supervision, improving your ability to get things done through others, or directly overseeing the work of employees, you become a manager, someone who assigns work to people with demonstrated competence in certain areas. Managers have a larger view, and this comes with greater responsibilities. 
As you move up the scale of management, becoming more knowledgeable and effective in getting more and better results from more and different people, you reach the highest level, that of a leader. At this stage, you are responsible for determining what is to be done rather than how it is to be done. It is said that some leaders are made, some are born, and some people have leadership thrust upon them. Leaders emerge or are promoted to deal with a situation requiring leadership ability. In its simplest terms, the role of the leader is to take responsibility for results. The primary reason that people are promoted into increasingly higher levels of leadership positions, or perhaps they're even fired, is because of failure to execute. They do not do the most important jobs expected of them, nor do they get the results demanded of them. Leaders have vision, the first quality of leadership based on 3,300 studies of leaders reviewed by James McPherson is the quality of vision. Leaders have vision, they have the ability to project forward into the future and develop a clear picture of where they want their organizations to go. They then have the ability to share this vision with others and gain their commitment to make this vision a reality. You become a leader when you accept responsibility for results. You become a leader when you begin to think, act, and talk like a leader. You become a leader when you develop a vision for yourself and for your company, your life, or your area of responsibility. There are hundreds of books written about leadership and the importance of vision, yet they can be boiled down to a single principle. A military leader has a vision of victory from which he never deviates. A business leader has a vision of success for the business based on excellent performance to which he or she is completely committed. A leader is a standard bearer. The leader sets the standard for the organization or the department. It is not possible for anyone in the organization to have a clear vision or to aspire to a higher standard of excellence than the leader. For this reason, the leader is the role model, the one who sets the tone and morale for everyone in the organization. The personality and influence of the leader affect everyone below him in the company, organization, or department. You cannot raise morale in a business, it filters down from the top, from the leader. The behavior of the leader influences and affects the behavior of everyone else. If the leader is positive, confident, and upbeat, everyone in the organization will be influenced by his behavior and will be more confident, positive, and upbeat as well. Walk the talk. When you become a leader, you must discipline yourself to be leader-like. You must walk, talk, and act the part of a leader. You become a different person with different responsibilities than a manager. When you are working your way up, you are a part of the staff or the sales team. When you become a manager, you are part of management. This means that when you are part of the staff, your orientation is upward and sideways. But when you become a leader, your orientation is downward toward all the people for whom you are responsible. Perhaps the most important behavior of a leader is for you to discipline yourself to be a role model. Imagine that everyone is watching you and patterning everything they do and say based on your behavior. When you become a leader, you no longer have the luxury to let it all hang out. From the time you are promoted into leadership, you have a special responsibility to discipline and control your words and behaviors in such a way that you bring about the very best possible results for your organization and for other people. Set the standards. The leader sets the standards for the organization's behavior, quality of work, personal organization, time management, and appearance. In excellent organizations, the leader is the person who everyone looks up to and wants to emulate. In most cases, the leader works harder than others in the company. The leader appears to be more committed, more determined, more courageous, more visionary, and more persistent than anyone else. The leader sets a tone that everyone wants to emulate. The leader also sets the standard for how people are treated in the organization. When a leader treats people with courtesy, consideration, and concern, it quickly becomes known that these are the standards to which others must adhere. Set values and principles. In addition to a clear vision for the organization, the leader must have a set of values and organizing principles that guide behavior and decision making. Everyone must know what the leader and the company stand for and believe in. The job of the leader, then, is to articulate this vision of excellent performance within the constraints of high ethical standards at all times. He or she must walk the talk and live the values and behaviors he or she teaches. The very best standard for a leader is the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. For example, when Jack Welch was the president of General Electric, he encouraged managers to treat each employee as if that employee might be promoted over his head sometime in the future and he might find himself working under the person who is now working below him. 
This way of thinking assured that managers treated their staff with a high degree of respect and courtesy. Seven Principles of Leadership To be an effective leader, there are seven principles you must incorporate into your leadership behavior and activities. 1. Clarity This is perhaps your most important responsibility. You must be absolutely clear about who you are and what you stand for. You must be absolutely clear about your vision and where you want to lead your people. You must be absolutely clear about the goals and objectives of the organization and how they are to be achieved. Especially, you must be absolutely clear about the values, mission, and purpose of the organization and what it stands for. Everyone around you and below you must know exactly why they are doing what they do and what their company has been formed to accomplish. 2. Competence As the leader, you must set a standard of excellent performance for the organization as well as for every person and function in the company. Your goal must be for your company to be as good or better than your very best competitor. You must be continually seeking ways to improve the quality of your products and services to your customers. 3. Commitment The leader is absolutely committed to the success of the organization and believes completely that this organization is the best in the business or will be the best in the future. This passionate commitment to the organization and to success and achievement motivates and inspires people to do their best work and put their whole hearts into their jobs. 4. Constraints The job of the leader is to identify the constraints or limiting factors that set the speed at which the company achieves its most important goals of revenue and profitability. The leader then allocates people and resources to alleviate those constraints and remove the obstacles so it can perform as one of the best in the business. 5. Creativity. The leader is open to new ideas of all kinds and from all sources. The leader is continually encouraging people to find faster, better, cheaper, and easier ways to produce excellent products and services and take better care of customers. 6. Continuous learning. The leader is personally committed to reading, listening, and upgrading his or her personal knowledge and skills as an executive. The leader should attend additional seminars and courses to improve his or her skills and abilities. At the same time, the leader encourages everyone in the organization to learn and grow as a normal and natural part of business life. The leader provides time and resources for training and development. The leader knows that the best companies have the best trained people, the second best companies have the second best trained people, and the third best companies have the least trained people and are on their way out of business. 7. Consistency the leader has the self-discipline to be consistent, dependable, reliable, calm, and predictable in all situations. One of the great comforts of business life is for an employee to know that the leader is completely consistent and reliable. An effective leader does not change from day to day. The leader is not blowing in the wind by each new situation or problem or emergency that arises. Instead, the leader is calm, positive, and confident especially under pressure. The Inevitable Crisis the only thing that is inevitable in the life of the leader is the crisis. When you rise to a position of leadership, you will experience crises repeatedly, crises that are unpredictable, unbidden, and often capable of seriously damaging the organization. It is in the crisis that the leader demonstrates his competence. In times of crisis, the leader becomes calm, cool, objective, and completely in control. The leader asks questions and gathers information. The leader assesses the situation accurately and makes whatever decisions are necessary to minimize the damage or cut the losses. Great leaders discipline themselves to keep their fears and misgivings private. They do not share their concerns with their staffs, knowing that this can cause confusion and loss of morale. Instead, the leader asks a lot of questions, probes deeply into situations so that he or she understands them thoroughly, and keeps his or her feelings private. As far as the members of the organization are concerned, the leader is always calm, positive, relaxed, and in complete control no matter what is happening. Self-control and leadership. There's a direct relationship between your ability to discipline yourself and your behaviors and your readiness to lead. It is only when you prove to others that you are in complete control of yourself that they develop the confidence to put you in a leadership position and keep you there. The leader realizes that everything he says to or about another person is magnified. The leader, therefore, praises and encourages people both in their presence and when they are not around. He never says anything negative that could be misinterpreted or that could demotivate or offend another person. If he has problems with someone, he addresses them privately out of sight and earshot of anyone else. Leadership Qualities 
Leaders discipline themselves to plan, prepare, organize, and check every detail. They take nothing for granted. They ask questions to ensure that they have a complete understanding of a situation, problem, or difficulty. Great leaders act as if they own the entire company. They accept a high level of personal responsibility. The leader never complains, makes excuses, or blames others for problems. Leaders are intensely action-oriented. They gather information carefully, and they make the decisions that are necessary. They set measures and standards and hold others to them. They insist that the job be done quickly and well. Leaders rise to the top. Leaders rise to the top of an organization as cream rises in milk. When you accept complete responsibility for getting results, concentrate single-mindedly on completing your most important tasks, continually upgrade your knowledge and skills as well as your ability to contribute value to your company, and treat other people with kindness and consideration, you will emerge as a natural leader. As you demonstrate your ability to make an increasingly valuable contribution to your organization, people above, below, and on both sides of you will want you to be promoted into leadership and will support you when you reach that position. One of your primary aims in life is to walk, talk, act, speak, and treat others as a leader would. Eventually, your position will be equal to your performance.